Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing so, so well. Today we have a very exciting video. I asked for some questions on Instagram a while back and I'm finally getting to it. We have a lot of questions. Some are heavy, some are super lighthearted. I also scrambled them. So I kind of don't know what order they're gonna come in. So let's get started because we have a lot to get through. I'm also in the middle of getting ready. I have my base down. I don't think I'm gonna do lashes because I just don't feel like it. I did a super, super quick face today because I'm just running out of the house and it's already almost three. So I'm gonna be taking this off within a couple hours too. I just need to look presentable when I exit the house. First question is no hate, just curious. Have you ever considered Ozempic? Of course I have. Who hasn't? I feel like everyone has. Uh, if you're not familiar with Ozempic, it is a medication that came out to help diabetics. And then I think celebrities got a hold of it. And then it just kind of spiraled and turned into this huge snowball. There's also other medications that are like Ozempic and other ones. Something about like semi-glutide and uh, Wagovi. And G there's so many options, you guys. They've also made medications that are like Ozempic, but not so much like Ozempic because it's just supposed to help with weight loss. So it's not taking away from diabetics. And you know, I think all of that stuff is amazing. If you wanna lose weight and you're struggling, I think it's a great way to boost. However, as much as I've considered Ozempic and all those other things, I've also considered the side effects that come with it, the money that has to go with it. And I just don't think that I've tried hard enough. Like I've lost weight before. I just went through a lot and I ate and I gained it all back. So I know I can if I really try. If I had the money, I would. Shoot, I would do it in a heartbeat. I would not even hesitate because who doesn't want to look good, feel good, be the best version of yourself? I also think that it's great and beneficial for people because it's going to help you and prevent you from getting other illnesses like diabetes or heart failure or high blood pressure, which causes heart attacks and et cetera, and et cetera, and et cetera. It's just great to be healthy. Second question is, you said nothing was off limits. So when was the last time you had sex and how often do you? I'm not gonna give dates, but it has been very long. I don't go around just sleeping with people. Obviously I used to when I was younger because you know, everyone has a hoe face, but I don't anymore. But that's also because I'm not dating right now. The last time I did it was a while ago. I, I won't say like a year ago, but like it's been a while for sure. I'm gonna quickly do my lips. I'm just using MAC lip liner and Soar, of course. I will also have everything linked down below. And then today I'm gonna go in with the NYX Fat Oil in Mist Call. Continuing on to the next question, how have you dealt with mean girls and women who are conniving and jealous? Um, you know, I don't, I'm not really around mean girls or conniving jealous women a lot. Most of the time I usually deal with them the way that I deal with children when they're annoying just ignore them. Mm -hmm. Yeah what are you gonna do? You know, like, are you gonna fight them for their own insecurities? Cause clearly they're insecure. I don't know what you're insecure about, but you're insecure for being jealous and conniving or mean because you have no reason. There is no reason to be mean, conniving or jealous unless someone gives you a reason, even though jealousy I feel like is a personal issue, you know? So I'm just like, there's no way of dealing with them. You just don't deal with them. That's my best advice because that, I think that's how I deal with them, that I just don't. You're not worth my time. All you do is radiate negativity, like you stink of negativity and I just don't have the time or the energy to give to you. How do you forgive your parents body shaming you? I have so much resentment towards my mom for pointing out things that are now insecurities, things I didn't notice before. I'm so sorry that your parents have made you feel that way. That is honestly extremely, uh, I my heart breaks for you because I know the feeling. The best advice I can give is to tell your parents. I think the only thing that helped my mom because she used to do that a lot is I had to tell her, I was like, you're being extremely hurtful. Like, I just want you to know that if you continue this, I am not comfortable with you. Like all you're doing is breaking my trust between us, our relationship. You're just chipping at it more and more and more because my body and the way that it looks has nothing to do with our relationship, but it sounds and feels like you are 
taking the size of me and the way that I look and using that to grade how much you love me. I think what helped me understand and kind of work through it was that I understand the logic behind it. So with that, I was like, hey, I get it, but you're not helping me. Next question is, in the era of dating versus not dating, how to come back from it? I'm 36 now. I didn't understand this question too much, but I feel like I get it a little bit, so I'm gonna try to answer it the best that I can. It's hard, okay? It's really hard. I think the best thing that you can do is put yourself out there. Obviously, that's very hard. Uh, you can use dating apps. Dating apps are extremely helpful, not that they're the best because obviously I have not had good luck, but a lot of people have and, and it's better than not having anything. I think the best thing that you can do is just be 100% yourself. I think if I enter dating right now, I would just be 100% myself, like unapologetically. I used to be very like adapt to the person that I'm with, but I'm so over that phase. I am like, if I date, I'm gonna be 1000% myself. If you don't like me, then you don't like me. Like we're not gonna get far anyways, cause I'm not gonna fake it in our relationship. I don't have time for that bullshit. So we're just gonna get right to it. This is me, if you don't like it, then you don't like it and we're not compatible. And I think that's the best way to look at dating because you wanna find your better half and you're only gonna find your better half if you are portraying the most honest version of yourself. Okay, you guys, I will keep answering throughout the video. We still have a lot of questions to get through, but I gotta get out of this house and I gotta go get some lunch because I am starving. So let me figure out what I'm doing with my hair and figure out an outfit and let's get out of this house. Okay, so I didn't end up leaving the house because I ran into something and then it just was so time consuming. So I'm going to stay home, but that's fine. I have lots to do. I actually have to clean my room, but I wanted to show you guys some stuff that I grabbed last week when I was over at Kim's when we went to Daiso and Home Goods and TJ Maxx, because I never got a chance to show you, and I really, really like all my stuff. So these are the two things that I got from TJ Maxx specifically. I have been loving the House of Harlow um, earrings. I have a few of them, and I keep growing my collection. I saw these hoops, and I was just so in love with them because they're not, they're just unique, you know? They're not just standard hoops. They're, they have like a little bit of shape to them, and they're also a little bit bigger than my normal hoops, and I don't have any bigger hoops anymore because I used to have like the standard regular hoops, but I don't wear those because I just don't like them on me. And it was only $9.99. The second one I got is a little bit more unique in a way where I can't wear them every day. I gasped so loud. Everyone probably was like, what the heck? This one is also House of Harlow, but look at these beauties. I'm sorry, what? This flower detailing here and then the pearls and then the bottom flower pearl here. It's just so, so pretty. Should I try these on with you guys? I'm gonna try them on with you guys because I have not tried them on and I wanna know what they look like on me. So here are the hoops. These are what the hoops look like. Are they not so, so, so cute? I think they're so pretty. They actually are like the most perfect size. I really like the size. It's not too big and chunky, but it's like good enough where it's like, oomph, you know? I don't know where I'm gonna wear these to, but I just couldn't leave them. I had to take them home. <gasps> I'm sorry, what? My ears flay a little bit. My ears flay. My ears lay a little flat on my head. So I'm like lifting them up, but oh my gosh. That is so cute. Is anyone having a wedding? I, I, I feel like I should wear this to a wedding. It's so pretty. Here's Clementine judging me. Are you judging me? Are you judging me? You look like you're judging me. It's cause she's like, are you leaving or not? You got ready, you changed your clothes. Like if you're gonna leave, just leave already, huh? That's what you're worried about. But guess what? Plans changed, I'm not leaving anymore. But you don't understand English, so you have no idea what I'm saying. I'm gonna stay home. I'm gonna stay home. <laughs> she has no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm 
getting my water ready because I ordered poke. Um, I was originally gonna go to North Shore because that's another place that everyone recommended, but then North Shore is not online, so I guess I'll have to visit in person. I ordered from Pokey Pokey, and it's, I think, on Bolsa in Westminster. I just got my food, so I ordered this from Pokey Pokey, P-O-K-I-P-O-K-I. -O -K -O I got a bowl, and I also got an onigiri because I saw that they had it on their menu, and it looked interesting, although, it kind of took a little bit for the driver to get here, so it's really soggy, which is fine. I got half brown rice, half chips. I'm gonna try this salmon. Pretty good, pretty good. Mmm. Mmm. I really like it here. But while I eat lunch, I'm gonna go through some more questions with you guys. How is the running journey going? Um hasn't started yet. I, I'm, I, I don't know if I'll get to it, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> and if not, <laughs> there's always next year. Along with that, the next question is, what goals have you accomplished? Something big for me that I really wanted to accomplish this year was getting to where I wanted to be financially. And I'm not like exactly where I wanna be, but it's gonna take some time. However, I am definitely a lot closer than I was when I wrote down that goal and told myself that that's something that I wanna achieve. Next question is, how do you deal with being single for so long? Mm. Naturally, I'm gonna have times when I get really sad and really lonely and all up in my feels, especially when I see like my best friend and her marriage and I'm like, wow, like she's so lucky to have her husband and when I see other people in relationships and just in general. But then I often remind myself that a relationship is not, me not being in a relationship doesn't take anything away from me. I'm not missing out on life because I'm not in a relationship. Does that make sense? It's like a relationship is only going to add to my life, but it's like, I make my own money. I'm very happy. I have friends, I have family, I have Clementine. I'm not missing out. I would love to be in love. I would be so lucky to fall in love. But then logical me, I'm like, I'm fine. It really, sorry you guys, Clem keeps pushing her butt against the little tripod. How is your relationship with your parents? and how has it evolved? My relationship with my parents have evolved a lot from the time that I was in college to now. But then again, it's also been like 10 years since I was in college, you know? I definitely have more of a mature understanding now that I'm an adult and I make my own money and I pay for everything myself. I have a different type of respect for them. I've also healed a lot of traumas and like just a lot of things that happened between us, especially during my college years. There was a time where they almost kicked me out. There was a time that I felt they didn't love me for me. There was just a lot. I'm very close to my mom and our relationship was almost completely broken. I don't know if I can confidently say that we would have ever not spoken to each other, but I felt like that was gonna be the case at the time. So I'm very grateful that I did stay home and I was able to mend all those things. And now when I leave, I feel like I have an even stronger relationship with my parents. Any advice on how to move on from a long-term relationship? I have not been in a long-term relationship, so I can't say that I know exactly how you're feeling, but I have been in a long-term friendship and it broke and it ended and my heart broke into a million pieces. So I can only imagine that that's pretty similar, maybe a little bit more because it was an intimate romantic relationship, but friendships are also very hard. And all I can say is give it time, let yourself cope. I don't know if they broke up with you or you broke up with them, but talk about it, talk about it, cope with it, cry. Spend your time with family, friends, whoever gives you the most comfort. And I know this is the worst thing to say, but time is the only thing that'll heal you. With time, you'll change. With time, you'll understand, or with time, you will just evolve. Life will happen and I promise it'll get better. I'm sorry I don't have anything better to say, but 
it really is time. Time will heal a lot. I'm gonna continue eating my lunch and continuing my drama and I will see you guys in a little bit because honestly, I'm so hungry. I'm gonna scarf this whole thing down. I got a new keyboard on Amazon and it is my favorite keyboard ever. So I got a keyboard last time and I still like it, but it's not like the best of the best, but this is pretty inexpensive and it's better than the last one. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an ASMR in a little bit. So I believe it comes in like two other colors, but I really liked the green one because it kind of reminded me of like matcha. It's like more neutral in my opinion, but I love her so much. It does not come with the wire. I'm sorry, this is deceiving, but this is actually mine. I actually set her up. Her lights do come on, but I have them where each individual one is lit up. My mom is making popping soup, so I am going to have some. This one's mine. The little mini bowl. Collections complete. Wooden shoes. Wooden is. Wooden you. Wait, look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? <gasps> what do you think my collection is complete? <laughs> so papingzu is a Korean dessert. It's shaved ice. The original way to eat it is shaved ice with condensed milk with fruits in it. And there has to be pot, which is <laughs> red red beans. That's the pot and the pingzu is the ice portion. Ew! <laughs> Thank you, Emma. <laughs> there you go, no? You're gross. Thank you. And then you kind of like mash it all together and eat it together. So my mom made a little mini version. Uh, mm. A little bit salty. Yeah. The perfect way to end the night. This is the original. This is what it's supposed to look like. The red beans are put, and there's like mochi on top, and there's pingzu on the bottom, and there's like kunkaru, which is <coughs> ro roasted, roasted uh, soybean powders at the bottom with um, another different type of Korean rice cake. This is what it's supposed to look like. I just don't like it because it has too much pot. Clemmy's eating her evening snack of the day. Huh, how was it? Alma gives her a snack at the end of the day. So it's kind of a routine. I'm gonna do my skincare with you guys and answer some more questions. We have a few left. We've gone through half. Now we're gonna go through the second half. Favorite lady toy. I'm definitely more of the zzz -z girl more than the ditto because um, the ditto is so uncomfortable. Like, I just don't like it. Something about it, man. I don't know if it's because like, I know it's not real. It's just, it's not that great. What do you think is your biggest character flaw? I'm incredibly opinionated. But that's the thing. I'm not to other people. This is like my deep, dark, inner, like, you know, like self that I'm sharing with you guys. And I'm also extremely critical, which are not great things to have. Those are not good qualities to have, but I can't help it. That's just who I am. I did my first three products and then I usually let this sit, sink into the skin, and then I'll move on to the next products. I usually like let this dry down. Next question is, how are you doing? Truly, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for asking. I'm doing pretty great. Right now, I feel like, I don't know, like I feel really good. I feel like I'm mentally present. I struggle with like a dab of depression and I feel like I'm just extremely happy right now. I'm very content in life. I want more of the positives, you know, I'm not dwelling on the negatives. So this person wants to stay anonymous, but I also did ask for these questions a 
few, maybe like a month ago. So I hope you're still okay, but I did still want to answer it. Would you stay with your husband of 24 years, even if he hasn't touched you in five? So there's a lot to unpack with this and I feel like it's so vague. The first thing I wanna clear up is I don't know your relationship the way that you know your relationship. I don't know what kind of hardships you guys have gone through. 24 years of marriage is a very long, long, beautiful time. And five years is also a very, very long time. So I think depending on what your situation is, as an outsider who doesn't know anything except for the fact that he hasn't touched you in five years and clearly that bothers you enough to question it, I think that you deserve answers and maybe maybe your husband is keeping something from yourself and maybe you're keeping something from yourself. I think maybe talking to each other is the best thing you can do if you have already talked to him and he, if you're openly talking to him and you're like, hey, you haven't touched me in five years and that bothers me and he doesn't care. Look into that, see why he doesn't care because he is your partner of 24 years. I feel like that speaks volumes if he doesn't care that you are bothered by the lack of intimacy. Some people can look into couples therapy, that might work, that might help him open up or you open up depending on what the situation is. But I think the first step is always talk to him and share with him, confide in him, he's your partner, you should trust him. And if you don't trust him, I think that's also a big red flag. Next question is how would you deal with in-laws that don't like you. So at first I took this as a in-laws as only the parents in law, but then I realized in-laws can be so much more like the aunts and the uncles and the sisters and the brothers and the cousins. It could be so broad. But I think if it was just the parents, I honestly would have an open conversation with them because I'd be like, what's the problem here? Like you can't first of all, I would confirm with someone. Like whether it's like I brought a friend to the party and she so happened to see the action happening or like or like my husband actually saw like his parents do or say something and it was like obvious. I would make sure that someone saw it because I need to know like if I'm crazy or not. And then after that, I would go and honestly tell them. I, I would ask them openly. I would just be like, is there an issue? Like, why don't you like me? And throughout this whole thing, I would have shared it with my significant other. Like he should know that this is how I feel. And I'm hoping that he doesn't gaslight me into like not thinking that, but I would hope that he's on my side and he is trying his best to understand the situation. Obviously no one is gonna feel comfortable if you're attacking their family although you're the one that's feeling attacked. So I would want him to know how I feel and how I plan on resolving this issue. And the only reason I say I would confront them is because I gotta live with this man for the rest of my life. Like he's in your life, I'm not gonna take you away from him. So we gotta work it out. Like you gotta figure out a way. And if we can't come to a, an agreement or to a decent liking, then I'll just keep myself out of it. And if my husband doesn't understand that, then clearly you don't know me well enough because you would have known that I would have tried my best to get on their good side and I would have tried my best to understand why they are the way they are and why they feel the way they feel about me. If he doesn't understand, then you, as hell, you for sure don't know me and I don't know how this is gonna last. My skin looks great. Okay, I'm gonna get in bed and I'm gonna start my Korean drama because these days I'm a little old grandma and I sit down and I watch my little Korean dramas. Okay, you guys, it is time to end the night. We are going to continue. We're gonna continue on with the last five questions that I have. Has Kim ever vetoed a guy that you were dating? vice versa, or do you not ask for opinions? I feel like we're very good at respecting each other's decisions and opinion. Also at the same time, like as much as I love my best friend and as much as my best friend loves me, unless there's like a serious reason, which I think we're both smart enough to have realized how serious it was, we just don't care. Like if you like someone, just because your friend says, oh, I don't like them, doesn't mean that you're gonna give up on the guy, you know, if you really, really, really like them. But of course we confide in each other. She won't ever openly be like, like, I don't like this person, but she'll definitely question me and like make me think for myself. And then, you know, you start to spiral and you figure it out. And then you're like, okay, maybe, maybe she has a point. And then you realize, okay, maybe I don't really like him. Thoughts on sex on the first date. I mean, honestly, do whatever you want to do. I personally don't. I think that having sex is an intimate act and I don't like doing it with people who I don't care about. Now, that doesn't mean I've never done it before. And that doesn't mean that it couldn't happen 
happen again because if I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. But you know, my intentions are never to on the first date. When will you travel to Korea? I'm thinking maybe summer 2026 with my mom. I would wanna go sooner, but my goal is to fly us business class. Do you think people can still meet naturally? No dating apps, etc. Of course, I think people meet on the daily, through friends, through colleagues, through family. There's just so many opportunities. I think the only thing that we have a hard time doing is putting ourselves out there and making ourselves available to that. It's not that it's been successful or anything like that, but I don't think it's like impossible because just because you're on dating apps doesn't mean you're gonna meet someone either. So I think the possibilities are endless. Last question of the evening, everybody. When are you moving out? How has that been progressing? It has been progressing. I am not going to share a lot of that until the time is here, but it is progressing. I know you guys are very excited for that next chapter in my life and it's going to happen. But if anybody's excited, trust and believe I'm the most excited, but I will film every part of that journey so you won't miss out. I promise, I promise, I promise. If you guys have made it this far to the q and A, I I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog slash q and A. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to like this video, comment down below, answer some of these questions for me, tell me your opinions and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time, bye.